Hi there, my name is Dr. Louise Crowley. I oversee the Clinical and Communication Skills Programme at the University of Limerick. I just want to give you a brief overview of the programme. The medical school here uses a problem-based learning approach, or PBL approach, so each week the students get a different problem, patient problem to solve or work through, and uh, they do this in small groups of eight or nine students, and likewise for clinical skills teaching. The skills are taught in the same PBL groupings and in the context of the clinical case. So we draw on the principles of adult learning Learning in that whatever problem you're learning about you learn the skills in our classes to help you deal or, or solve the problem so for example if a patient presents with chest pain um, in, in your PBL case you will learn how to talk to the patient about the chest pain how to take a relevant history of that chest pain you'll get to perform an ECG and you'll also learn how to examine the patient's heart or circulation system so learning in context is very important so what kind of skills do we learn well we learn how to take histories or gather information we learn how to give information in, to patients in an understandable way. We learn how to examine the patients, perform physical examinations, and we learn some procedural skills. Okay, so the methods we would use for get, gathering information or giving information involves the tutor getting the group to brainstorm on, on the approach you would take and the information you would need to find out. Uh, and then students get to practice in role plays with each other. And they also can look at videos. And in the second year of the program, we bring in a lot of simulated patients or pretend patients. And ultimately towards the end of the year, we have some real patients that come in as well. For physical examinations, we rely heavily on peer examinations. So that involves the students examining each other. And for most students, that's not a problem. They'll come in their sports bras, in their sports gear, and they're ready to, to kit off. Um, but for some students, th that, that may cause a problem. For example, if they have a uh, part of the body that they're self-conscious about due to a scar or a medical problem. And we've no problems with that, uh, as long as students just inform the tutor beforehand and they might volunteer for, for some other skill. So we're very lucky that we have a range of technology, simulators, um, simulated patients, a uh, hugely dedicated group of tutors. Um, but I suppose the most important tools from a student's perspective are that they reduce their eyes, their ears, uh, fine tune their physical examination skills so that they can rely on themselves uh, when they're interacting with patients uh, in year three and year four in their clinical placements and further on in, in their medical career. And I suppose what we try to do in years one and two is I suppose provide a springboard and a foundation for students so that they can learn these skills in, in a safe environment and hopefully in an enjoyable environment and that when they get into year three and year four they can build on those skills and consolidate them um, by having the opportunity to examine real patients under the supervision of their GP uh, tutors in, in general practice placements and in the hospital setting obviously under the supervision of our consultant colleagues. A very positive part of our job as tutors and, and teachers is uh, seeing students start off uh, at the start of the programme being uncertain of what they're doing and, and obviously learning from their mistakes and seeing that progression from being a rookie, uh, very nervous individual, progressing through the, the stages of becoming a, a, an expert and it's always very uh, moving to see the students uh, graduate and walking across the stage on graduation day receiving their parchment and seeing the pride in their parents' eyes and the sense of achievement for the students and also it gives us great pride to see them moving on and, and starting uh, a new chapter in their lives, hopefully looking after our patients uh, in, in, in the local area and, and uh, throughout the world.